What's the bird? What's that bird? There's a bird that just dive bombs and shoots straight into the water and grabs a fish. Finny's trying to come up with the, the name of the bird. Is it the doo-doo bird? A kingfisher. I for, yeah, let me type that in. Yeah, it's not a huge bird. It might have some heft to it actually. Yeah, this one qualifies for another fun facts. I either like what I'm doing fun facts on or I just talk a lot of crap about it, but there might be some substance to this bird. At first glance, its face has some substance hanging off the front. Like that is quite the pecker. Wow, just by looking at that, you can understand why it catches fish in the water. That one caught a little chub. King. Fisher bird. Should we use Wikipedia this time? Ooh, I got a lot of negative feedback concerning Wikipedia last video. Let's see if I can find an alternative encyclopedia service for kingfisher birds. Here's the field guide. That's cool. Why does my rotisserie have to be right here? <laughs> Making it awkward. Let's roll with it though. Rotisserie is right there. The kingfisher. When you say kingfisher, it's referring to about 90 different species of birds noted for their spectacular dives into the water. Any bird diving into the water, I tend to note, especially around here, there's not that many. You don't see it too often. Iowa. Are there loons in Iowa? Okay, I'm showing my ignorance. They range in size from four inches, this is the length of the bird, to 16 and a half inches. I should have made a bigger lure. Mine's about four. I could have done a 16 inch one of these. Dang it. Apparently these birds are extremely Apparently. Apparently these birds are extremely loud. They're very colorful and very loud. Some might say flamboyant. The Encyclopedia Britannica uses very colorful language. It says this, typically the bird sits still, watching for movement from a favorite perch. It's gotta be the favorite perch. Having sighted at its quarry, it plunges into the water and catches the fish usually no deeper than 25 centimeters, 10 inches. Below the surface in its dagger shaped bill, not spear, not sword, not pokey thing, not even knife, dagger shaped bill. There's different shapes to daggers too. That's not a very descriptive word to use. They're just trying to be dramatic. I appreciate that. With a swift downstroke of its wings, it bobs to the surface, not comes to the surface. It bobs to the surface. Then it takes the prey back to the perch <laughs> and it stuns the fish by beating it against the perch before swallowing it. I don't have to think of things to say. I can just read Encyclopedia Britannica, and this is good content. Many species also eat crustaceans, amphibians, and reptiles. That's good to know, that they don't always just dive into the water for their food. They might just eat a bug that happens to be on their favorite perch. So typically this bird's a river dweller. It finds its food in the river. So the only widespread North American species of this bird is the belted kingfisher. It's loud, very colorful, and uses this technique to hunt as well. This handsome crested bird flies off over the water when disturbed, uttering a loud rattling call. It's uttering it. It's not squawking, it's uttering. The male in its courtship ritual, it offers a fish to the female as she perches. That's beautiful. That's got to be a sign of quite a bit of intelligence for a bird, you know? Like, here's a fish, love me, okay. You know? You, there's a little bit of thinking to that. After the capitulation, <laughs> the pair circle high overhead and chase each other while crying shrilly. And by the way, I do not like the way a belted kingfisher bird looks. They're pretty, they're pretty lame. Let's definitely paint a different version. So the largest of all kingfisher birds is the kookaburra. That's right. That's where that name comes from. The kookaburra is a kingfisher bird. Am I saying that right? Kookaburra. This bird is also called that. It's in Australia and it's known for its ridiculous laughing call. It sounds like laughing. Can we get a little sound bite of the kookaburra? Also called the Bushman's Clock. That's with an L. The kookaburra is a very early rising bird and they make that noise very early in the morning. That big kookaburra bird can be really tame too. There's like suburbs in Australia where people feed kookaburras and they're just there making really loud laughing noises really early in the morning. Lives in families, they roost together. Cool bird. They're not a threatened species. Uh, king kingfishers are classified as least concerned. There's a lot of them. Very, very capable little bird. Not up there in the ranks with like an eagle or a hawk or something, but it's like an apex predator when it comes to getting its sized food. I'm sure the big ones are pretty capable. It dives into the water and catches fish for food, and it's a bird. Good for it. So nest digging duties, that's pretty interesting. 
are shared between the two genders of birds. During the initial excavation, so they're digging, the bird may fly at the chosen site with considerable force and they might injure themselves while they do this. Fatally. Wow, really? They're just digging a trench in the ground to nest in. And they come way out from left field and just slam into where they want their nest to be and that's their little hole that they'll live in if they don't die. I don't know, I just respect this bird less now because of that. Why do animals just want to kill themselves? Maybe they think they're gonna hit the water? Okay, fun facts are over. So, so far in this video, I have not explained anything about this lure. It's only been facts about this bird that's about to change. Okay. It's kind of starting to hit me how freaking awesome this is going to be, if it works good. Somehow, I'm not sure yet, but somehow I'm going to get these wings onto the side of this body to where they just do this. Like it could come forward and then it hits the back right there. It stops right there stops right there. Just like a normal crawling bait, it's gonna throw that throw that wing forward, then it's gonna throw the other wing forward, and throw the other one, and the other one, and crawl on the top like that. Nothing too complicated when it comes to the lure making world. It's just a crawler bait, but I'm actually carving out the wings, and the wood's gonna serve as wings. That's different. Bird bait. The smuggler chase baits, it looks to me like they stamped some fancy wings. They're not plastic or wood and actually look like sweet freaking wings like that, you know? Just trying to be different over here. <laughs> actually just trying not to copy. Okay, so pretty much every surface of this bird's gonna be carved. Feathers, bird fur stuff, and feathers, you know? Kind of a small but extremely carved bait. That was pretty much just me thinking about how long this is gonna take. It'll be worth it. Yeah, make sure you get your fingers all up in there. The closer your fingers are to that blade, the better your cuts will be. <laughs> There's some truth to that. This is how I do fur on wood. I just scored it a bunch. Now I'm gonna come in from this angle and do the same thing a bunch. Then I'm gonna come in from that angle and do the same thing a bunch. And I'll show you what it looks like. You don't see anything really start happening until you come in the last angle. It's gonna look like a fuzzy kingfisher. You can just scrape it to the side too with your finger and a lot of it falls off. So yeah, it's going from feathers back here all that carving to some fuzziness up on the back. I should show you the wings. We're gonna have some of that fine fur up on the top of the wings here. Plenty of meat left to get the joint. Ooh, I didn't even show you guys this. This is gonna be the joint connection to the wing. This is a piece of uh, stainless steel going in the side of the bait right there. There's gonna be a slot in the wing. Stuff it in there, put the pen through, and it'll be able to move as it should. All right, let's make this thing fuzzy. Slots, man. I already put one in the body right there. Still have to do that one. Slots in the wings. Everything gets its slot. Oh, I haven't showed you the bait. Look at that fur. Look at that fuzziness. Strongly considering leaving the bottom kind of blankish except for these awesome feet I carved. You see how they came off the body? And they go back on. The toes are kind of, yeah, whatever, but that's gonna be cool. They have red feet, bluish body, other colors. 
It's gonna be sweet. After removing all of that slottage material, I've decided the plans to put two thin pieces of metal and sandwich this thick piece of metal between that and just eyeball the heck out of it and make sure there's enough space. Yeah. I don't have any thin stainless steel. I gotta go to the store. Dang it. And this is why I made the slots way thicker than they needed to be so I can adjust how those come off the body so that they're perfectly even because they're gonna need to be, because that holds the wings straight. None of this, none of that, you know what I mean. Gotta get it straight, it's pretty straight like that. Super glue baking soda. Blanking soda. Wow. Your brain just starts making you say stuff weird the more you say it. I've said that so many times I can't say it normal anymore. Blanking soda. Okay, that one's good, I'm feeling it. Dude, that fly is gonna get shot. Look at that. Could have just cut his head off right there. These flies are merciless. I'm having to cut my own eye sockets because these eyes are too small for any of my bits. No problem though. The Delphino 3 is capable of anything. This is a piece of brass. How thick is it? I don't know, I threw away the packaging. But it's thin and it should give the inside of this wing, that sandwiching, sandwiching, <laughs> that bracket or whatever you would call that. It should give it some durability. It shouldn't just wear away after one day's use. Ideally, you would put stainless steel right there, but I couldn't find any, so I got some brass. We'll have nice metal against metal everywhere, joint connection movement. That should work very nicely on the corners though. There's four corners on this, and then I just, I need four pieces like that. I, I already glued in one off camera. It works good, just had to make sure it works, and it works. Just give it the old medium thick black super glue, little dollop. Then I use a flat, long stick with a rounded edge. Reach into the back there. That's where you wanna press it down first, and then just kind of press it flat. I'm not making sense right now, sorry. I'm just gluing that in. And then I give it a bunch of extra thin, let it soak in, sprinkle some baking soda for tradition purposes. How beautiful is that gonna be? Metal on metal contact everywhere, nice and smooth. Might even make some squeaky noises, like a bird. Wow. Big momentous step coming up. Drilling hole for the pivot point on the wings. Pinning the wings in, drilling that hole. Drilling it straight. Dang it. Um, okay. That came unglued. Did not want that to happen because it was perfectly glued in there and like sanded finished and oh, it's kind of in place still. I'm just gonna drop some more super glue in there and push it back. You know what, I'm just gonna try it again. We're through. We did it. Woo! <laughs> that really popped out. <laughs> I could feel it as it came out there. That was unsettling. We got a wing with a hole through it now. I put a little makeshift uh, pen through it there. That's loose. That's perfectly loose. It just throws itself around. And that's what you want with the crawler wings. They have to freely move. The curve that I put in that wing, hopefully that's enough to force water under it and push it up, move it forward like that, and then the other wing catches the water, does the same thing. Let's put both of these on. If this is on and these wings are even, I'm gonna be kind of proud of myself. A lot of eyeballing. Yeah, that's even. Put them both on the nose, that's the center. I mean, I can't do better than that. That is fantastic. Wow. Look at this goofy lure. Straight, symmetrical. Wow. So there's one more little like beak detail. 
pretty much all the detail on the beak I need to put on. And then the bird is done being carved. I'm gonna put the carving knife away. We're gonna install the hardware necessary. And we're gonna seal the wood and start painting. I should have made its beak bigger. Man, that is that is a shame. I mean, it's pretty big, but the real ones have bigger beaks. I'm looking over there at that honker and kind of proportionally, that honker's bigger. It's okay. Is that bleeding? No, I'm good. I got thick skin. It's hard to get these fingers to bleed. This is like week two. I've been putting it down and picking it back up a lot. Got some shape on the top, like little nostril slots. Is that what those are called on this bird? Nostril slots? Okay, we're all beaked up. Absolute dagger beak. Now, I'm gonna put weight in it first. Three eighth inch hole, anywhere between three sixteenths and a quarter inch deep, I think. That's a little over a quarter inch deep. Lead's hot. Okay. I didn't count how many drops that was, but that's enough. And oh my goodness, I already put a bunch of super glue on it. Sprinkling the baking soda. Now that is an angled hole. Gotta disengage my little boy hands. Grab onto that. For some reason that hole was a little, no. It's just an optical illusion. It looks crooked from this side, but it looks straight from that side, so. Yeah, it's straight down the center line. I'm gonna go eat, and we will get on to painting tonight. I have a pike I'm painting right now, let me show you. There's no video with this, and the head's not done. I think that's a beautiful pike pattern, though. What's on the body there? Gorgeous. Anyway, see you when I'm sealing this wood. I'm gonna brush it on and keep it away from those wing brackets. And yes, I forgot to install the line tie going on the bottom of the beak there. Completely forgot, I'll have to do that after this sets. Oh well, it doesn't matter. As for the wings, I'm dipping them, the whole thing, even that brass and stuff. I want that just to be sealed over super, super good. There'll be enough space for stuff to do its stuff, don't worry. Already looking gorgeous and very wing-like. I'm not liking those bubbles coming out of that crack, but I can blow on them every once in a while before it sets. Looking feathery. That's nice. Now, I want it to look like that or that, or like a mix. Maybe I can really mix it up from feather to feather, you know? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna mix it up between that dark and that bright, and that'll make it look even more interesting. Because if you look here, there's messy, messy spots alternating between the two. That's what I'll do. No further ado. Anywho. So second thing, second, gray. Okay, I think that's good enough. That's plenty of gray everywhere. I can come back in with white if I want to lighten it up. The wings get a lot, especially from this angle to hit all those ribs and stuff where it's carved and darken that up. Yes, very gray. And that's with an R, but it's okay because I think putting some pearls and some fluorescence and of course putting white back into it's going to give it that contrast it deserves. Contrast is what looks good. I'm really theorizing today. I'm sorry. Okay, I just dumped a bunch of fluorescent blue with the airbrush, just way over sprayed it. But I'm letting it pool up so that there's the light blue and the dark blue between the feathers. It's gonna look sweet. That gave it some fantastic detail. Wow, I like that. And it's like a teal towards the belly still. And then I'm gonna come in with an even lighter blue and do like dots and paintbrush work and stuff. I gotta get the orange on the belly though. And on these birds, they have a very discernible line between the orange and the blue. It's kind of annoying. I'm gonna have to paint that with a brush too, I think. Maybe stencil. No, I wanna do it with a brush so I can get the featherage. Featherage. Okay, I'm gonna do a thing. I'm gonna put blue 
really super heavy on the wings and then hold hold the wing like that so the serrations are like down let them collect and then heat gun to make cool pattern more letting it settle i can already see it happening heat gun i'll have to come back in with brush and clean that up because that didn't work very well Not on either wing really it, it, it makes it kind of random and cool and more blue so we'll just work with that from there. Looks like these dudes have a really bright streak down their back too. I'm gonna use pearl white first and I might put a color over it. And it's like a splotchy random thing. I think that is the amount of detail I'm willing to put on this. If I go further, I think it's kind of useless. I do need to spray lightly the whole thing in some sort of pearl, so I keep those serrations on the wings and it really defines them. I signed it right there on the belly. Kept the, the wings down here, the, they're gray. Even on the real bird, that picture certainly doesn't show it, but they're gray on the bottom of the wings mostly. A little bit of blue. I'm gonna leave them gray, just leave them plain like that. Eyeballs, that's what's next after this little pearl coat I'm doing. That was a lot of glue, whoopsie. These eyeballs are pretty cool. They're a pearl black, so they're like, you can see the shape, but they're still black. Very small detail on this lure overall, but that looks amazing. Using a manual drill bit here, carefully putting a hole in the beak that goes into the body. Just so I can get a line tie in there, of course, because I forgot to do that. And I'm fully aware that that does not look as good as what it looked before, but that is, yes, that is how it has to be. I need that line tie out right up there with the tip of the beak. I don't think the line's gonna be hitting the beak at all. I just need it protected. And that, that bit of steel right there will protect the beak. And I think it's at the right spot to where it clear coat. Gonna add a smidgeet of flaky blue cool stuff to the clear coat. It's actually a flake, it's not a powder. So there's gonna be suspended reflected particles in the clear coat of this bird. And they're like the perfect color. I'm glad I had that flake. I'm gonna spend like three minutes stirring this unnecessarily, probably after the first minute, and then apply it to the bird. Come right up close to those brackets, touch them a little bit. That's it. Just on the surface right there. Sept in a bit. Seeped in a bit. The sept a word. Past tense of seep. It's sepping. And it's set. It will not come off. That pen's not going nowhere. And we have an amazingly loose wing on this bird. That's one. Clear coat's done. Doesn't that look nice? Let's get the other wing on and I'll show you how nice it looks. That is it. We got the treble hook on. There's just one on this bait on the back. Line tie. Wings. Look at those feet. <laughs> I'm not really sure why I carved the feet, and I'm not sure why I'm putting more super glue on. Let's see what it looks like on the rod. That definitely borders the, kind of doesn't look like a lure parameters right there. That doesn't look like a lure. That looks like a toy or something. That is what it looks like on the rod. Let's see what it looks like in a fish's mouth. Right. 
I believe I timed this perfectly. The storm just passed. You can't see it. I'm at the ditch. And as you know, at this spot, it's just like a long channel and it's covered with trees. Birds fall out of trees onto water and get eaten. Wow, that is nasty. There's human feces on the ground over here. I'm gonna park back there so I don't have to walk by that to get my stuff. Oh boy. Here, oh, I gotta get thumbnail. I think 40 pictures is enough. Well, darn, <laughs> it doesn't do anything. Well, I guess it, it goes side to side if you twitch it. Yeah, I, I can pull it as slow as possible too, and it just... Huh, we can still catch a fish. All right, it's turning out to not be a very functional lure. It's fine. This happens on this channel, it's fine. <laughs> okay, I'm getting better at using it. Look at this. You gotta learn your bait, you know? I can get it to, to do the shimmy. A glimmer of hope. I think what I could do to these wings though is like add some plastic, like a scoop down, like a Lexan lip off of the back of each wing. Oh, I thought I had one for a second. Look how it dives. See it down there? It's hunting for a, a minute. Oh, I almost fell in. Whoa. <laughs> Did you guys see it though? I kind of want to just glue those wings together and have it be a diving bait. This top water's not really working out today. I'm not going to do that, but it crossed my mind. Oh no! No, no, I had him. That was a pike. Look what it did to the hook. Oh. It sent the hook up on the body. Maybe he'll come back. Oh, I scared a fish off of that stick. It scared the fish. Oh, whoa. I keep almost falling in. This is nuts. I feel like I shouldn't be here. I should go home, fix the lure, go back out, catch a fish. You can go ahead and call it goofy. I don't care. Here's my solution little paddles on the ends of the wings. That way it catches way out here, pulls it back, throws that wing, grabs that. I think they're blades of some sort that go on an inline setup and there's like a little tab that you can pull out so it's inline. It's serving a different and probably better purpose. Let's get back out there. It just rained quite a bit. I already said that, but makes me think backwaters are gonna be good. We're at the pike spot with the new and improved King Fisher. That noise is my backpack, I'm not farting. Did it help? No, it did not. That's okay. We'll just make it official and put it away. I don't think the joint's right. Dude, this bait cannot hook a fish. Well, I've been here another hour. My camera's overheated. I switched baits to a prey bait and I've been catching pike like crazy, but they won't, I put the bird lure back on. They won't bite that. They're just biting stuff that's on the bottom, bumping around slow. I caught a bass too. Yeah, it's a fantastic day of fishing. They're jumping everywhere. I lost a giant just now, like had this one ounce rod completely bent over. Kingfishers do not catch fish, man. Beef. I've remade the decision two times now to fish with this lure one more time. And let's fish out a pond to try to catch a bass. Okay. Dude, that was some beautiful blow ups, man. Well, ah, you win some, you lose some. That's annoying, dude. Ended up with a lot of bites on that bait. No hookups. Never sunk a hook into a fish, never had one on for a second, but I got a lot of hits, I think. Let me get the bait. 
teeth marks. You know, they're coming up to bite it and just, that's what would happen. Couldn't hook up on a fish, dude. That's why this video took, that's why this video took forever. Cause I just tried so hard to catch a fish for y'all. Here's the bait after like 14 hours of fishing. The bat got chewed up from the hook. That's too bad. The wings are still as they were when I first made it. And I know what the issue was with the action. This wing, it is like this. It needs to be like this, perpendicular to where the water's coming in. Maybe with a little bit of an offset so the water goes down, but that's what gets these baits to do that. I should not have pushed that at all. I thought I'd be safe to push that a little bit and, you know, be a little cooler, get that less of an incline going. Is that what's cool? That's what's cool. I was thinking about doing a toucan. I've had in my mind to do a toucan forever, and I think that'll lend well to the shape that a crawler bait like this needs to be, and now I know to make the wings correctly. I might try to make a toucan in this version in the near future, before topwater season's out. And you might have noticed my shirt. That's a gnarly bluegill shirt, dude, with the, the big sweet logo on the back. If you want one of those, get, get one. Where do I go to get that shirt? What do I do? It's in the description. Kind of a bummer, but if I caught fish on everything I made, there'd be no reason to fish with what I make. No, there would be, because you're, you're, it's a one, you, there's definitely reason to fish if there's a 100% chance to catch a fish, Never mind. Uh, I'm trying to think of some Hallmark card thing to say to make it, to justify what's going down. On to the next bait. Ow. There might be some substance to this bird. Nostril slots? Apparently. They're pretty lame. <laughs> I just respect this bird less now. It might have some heft to it, actually. Oh, no! I meant, oh, I almost fell in. Oh, whoa. I caught a bass, too.